Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Are you still using the LCOE to assess your renewable energy project? If so, stop using it. Today, we're going to see in which case you should stop using LCOE to assess your projects and what you should use instead. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today's video. Let's go. Let's analyze the following example. The data sent owner and operator with a flat demand of 800 kilowatts all year long is considering installing a behind the meter system. We're going to assume there is no restriction with space. And an engineering company has produced several designs and selected two of the most promising options. The current average tariff is 25 cents US dollar per kilowatt hour. As we're going to see now what the two options are. Option 1 is a simple solar PV system, and as you can see here, the system has this particular generation profile that is maximized to reach 800 kilowatts as the peak demand of the client. So that we're going to assume that the total generation is 505,000 kilowatt hours per day, and that's the same generation every single day. On top of this, the system has an LCOE of 24 cents USD per kilowatt hour. Option 2 is a solar PV plus battery system that will produce a flat generation and a total generation per day of 5,500 kilowatt hours, which is the same of the option number 1. But this system has an LCOE of 36 cents per kilowatt hour because of the cost of the battery. The question is, do you have enough information to choose the system that will bring the most benefit to the data center owner and operator. To complement it, we just have some simplification in here. We're going to assume the generation profile is the same for all days of the year. There is no variation in the production. The demand not met by the system will be procured from the grid. We're going to assume there is no escalation on cost and on tariff from the grid. And the battery has 100% round trip efficiency. Pause the vid and answer below if you think we have or we don't have enough information to choose between option 1 and option 2. Let's see whether we have or not enough information. What we have here is, in row 4, we have the total demand for the data center, which is 800 kilowatts. And these numbers are plugged in these two graphs in here, the 800 flat line. Then, in here, we have the solar generation, the 5,500, as you also saw in the graph below, which is represented in these particular lines in here. Then we have the electricity price, which is the average of 25 cents. In this particular case, here's a flat 25 cents tariff. And on row 10, we have what is the total savings on tariff if the client were to install the system, which is essentially the multiplication of how much generation the total system is, is given to the client multiplied by the given price. We're going to save every day $1,375 to the client. Then we have the battery plus PV system. I'm just giving here 100% efficiency, which is multiplied in every single number in here. And I'm calculating a flat demand with total generation per day of 5,500 kilowatt hours, as we also have for the solar PV generation. And then I'm just calculating here the total savings for the tariff for this particular client. Again, multiplying the price of electricity times the generation. And what do we have down here? We have just have the LCOEs and how much the client's saving. And as you can see here, the total, the total savings for both systems is the same. There is no difference. Okay, so this is scenario number one. So the question is, based on this scenario here, do we... Do you know which system is the best? Pause and think. And the answer is yes. You do know which option will bring the most benefit to the client. Why? Because the clients are going to save the same amount of money no matter which system is chosen. Either system 1 or system 2, the amount of saved money will be $1,375. Therefore, because the benefit is the same, you should only concentrate on the cost. And as you know, the LCOE for PV only is lower than the LCOE for the PV plus battery. 
in this particular scenario then you do have enough information to take a decision which option to choose but be mindful we are not considering yet the break-even point the project's IRR or NPV we're only saying that between the two options the one that would bring the most benefits to the client would be option one because the savings would be the same therefore you can only concentrate on the cost let's go to scenario number two now for scenario number two you have basically the same thing the only difference now is that we have different price of energy for any given hour of the day but still the average is 25 cents per kilowatt hour as you can see here in this calculation and here below we can see the graph how the value of energy changes during any given 24 hours of the day and as a result as we can see here there's a difference between how much money the data center operator will save when compared to option one to option two for option one now the data center owner would save 1180 dollars per day while for system two the data center operator would save 1375 dollars per day which is a difference of 16.5 percent the question is now which system brings the most benefits to the user from the lsu perspective you have that PV system only is the most beneficial one. But on the revenue perspective, it is clear that the solar PV plus battery is the one that brings the most benefit. So how do you take a decision? You should take a decision either based on a financial model by calculating the RRR and the NPV of the project, or you can also use what's called the levelized PPA or levelized electricity revenue or levelized electricity savings. Let's see what that is. Simply put, the levelized PPA, the levelized electricity revenue or the levelized electricity savings is nothing more than the NPV of the revenues divided by the NPV of generation. And you should use it whenever you have time of use electricity price. You may be asking now, what is the difference between LPPA, LER, or LES? There is no difference. It only depends on what your project is. If you have a project with an off taker where we're signing a PPA, you can call it LPPA. But if we're going to operate in a mission mode, where we're going to offload all the electricity to the grid, you can call it LER or levelized electricity revenues. And if you're going to install a system for self-production, then you can call it Levelized Electricity Savings or LES. So to finalize our video, we're going to use LCOE whenever you have fixed revenue. And the LCOE is going to be calculated as the NPV of the costs divided by the NPV of generation. But if you have time of use energy price, then you're going to calculate the Levelized PPA, Levelized Electricity Revenue, or levelized electricity savings by calculating the NPV of revenues divided by the NPV of generation. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you have enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you liked what you saw today. I'll see you next.